So this guy commented four weeks ago, and I'm not going to read the whole comment, but you know, he said, hey, sorry if this is covered in a different uh, video. I just came across this channel about a month ago. He started asking about the difference between nail clippers and a Dremel, what specific sandpaper grit we use to file the nails, et cetera. Just a lot of questions yeah. on the process, right? So I think I sent him back a little bit of a reply just getting into, you know, uh, the reason why I like Dremels versus nail clippers, which to make it really clear for everybody, the risk in using a Dremel is much, much lower than the risk in using clippers, yeah. right? With clippers, it's so freaking easy to cut the dog's nails too short. Mm -hmm. And then there, you got a bleeding mess and it's a disaster. You set your training back so far because the worst thing that you could do when you're doing nail trims is reassure the dog mm -hmm. that something painful is about to happen, yeah. right? <laughs> Uh, and listen, I've been there, done that. I used to be team nail clippers, right? I used to love yeah, nail clippers. Yeah. I was so comfortable with them. And I was just hesitant to move to the Dremel because I didn't know much about it. And I felt like I was really good with the nail clippers. And I literally remember this one time. <clears throat> I'm sure I've shared this story before, but I was uh, I was doing Vinny's nails, my Malinois. And I had like 10 minutes before a lesson, right? And I'm in the front room at the old facility in South Euclid. I'm just cutting his nails. Or I was in the back room, I think. I'm cutting his nails, right? And I finish and I threw him in the front room to clean up in the back for this lesson that was going to be coming in. And I poke my head into the front room just to check on him. This is like lesson's going to be coming in in like five minutes, right? And it looked like a murder scene up there. <laughs> Bro, there was like blood everywhere oh like the God. entire floors and Vinny paces around everywhere so there's just blood all over the floor it's splattered up on the sides of some of the walls and shit like it was brutal and if anybody has here has like cut their dog's nails too short and actually like quick their dog you know how bad that shit bleeds like, yeah right so I look at him I'm like holy shit right yeah so I grab him I obviously put some septic powder in the nail to like stop the bleeding and I, I put him in a crate and I'm just like up there with a fucking mop, just cleaning everything. Like, please don't walk in yeah, well, to I'm this like, blood. scene of a bloody mess like in the front of my training facility. Right. <laughs> <clears throat> and and listen, this was like I thought I was really good with nail clippers and I, I was pretty good with nail clippers, but I screwed up and I cut one of his nails too short. And, you know, luckily, Vinny, he didn't make too big of a deal out of it or anything like that. Yeah. But it was a fucking bloody mess. And I'm sure that set me back a little bit when I when I started doing his nails again. Then after that. Right. Mm -hmm. So no matter how good you are with them, the risk is always there, especially, you know, Vinny has dark nails. You can't see the quick through it, right? Mm -hmm. You got to kind of guess every time you go to cut, right? With the grinder, you're obviously able to file them back. And like your dog is going to start letting you know when you start getting quick to the, you know, close to the quick, obviously, before you ever cause any damage to it. And the way that the Dremel functions, let's say you do accidentally get to the quick because of how much heat is there. It's your dog's going to squirm and the heat from the Dremel will stop it from bleeding mm -hmm. like i've i was trying to think about this the other day i don't think i've ever seen a situation with a dog where the dog has been quicked to the point of bleeding everywhere with just a dremel yeah right <clears throat> so so that's why i like the dremel as far as the sandpaper grit and stuff you can use whatever kind of sandpaper grit you want just keep in mind if it's more coarse it's going to take off more nail quicker so you mm -hmm. can't go super long obviously if it's finer it's not going to grind as easily and it's going to create a lot more heat right mm -hmm. so Anyways, that's the reason why I like the Dremel as opposed to the nail clippers, right? But this guy was asking a bunch of questions on it. He said his dog was really bad with nail trims. So he commented back six days after that, right? Mm -hmm. Or not six days. That was four weeks ago. He commented six days ago okay. with an update. <clears throat> he said, just tried this out for the first time today. I have two large German Shepherd Huskies, one large German Shepherd Rottweiler, and one large Blackmouth Cur that has a very hyper-aggressive personality. I went into this a bit anxious because of how poorly trimming their nails has gone in the past. In the first round of basic exposure, and he put in parentheses, just barely grazing uh, the, each of the nails, which is you'll see in the step-by-step -step video, that's one of the steps, he said it went great. Thank you so much for the great information. I really appreciate how you showed the entire process rather than speeding through and cutting up the video, only showing the end result like most YouTubers would. Thanks. So... He's got big dogs, too. <clears throat> got some big dogs. Yeah. Obviously, he said he was anxious going into this because the dogs have all been pretty bad <clears throat> with having their nails done in the past. And a lot of times, the reason why it goes poorly is because lack of preparation, mm. right? And because the way that I break down some of this kind of stuff as far as step by step, this is what you do, this is what you do, this is what you do, it allows you to not rush into the later stages and get your preparation aligned with the earlier steps, mm. right? So it, it goes smoother. 
Yeah. Right. We had another client that was uh, very similar to this. We had this dog Louie come in for a follow up lesson because she needed to have the dog's nails done. Right. And this dog fucking talons like he, she's never been able to do the dog's nails before. He's always given her a hard time with it. So I did this same step with him. She came to the facility. I showed her the step and it was so minimal conflict. He was so good with it. Once we did the step-by-step process, we showed her how to do it. We got all the nails grinded, no resistance or anything on his end. And she was just shocked. Right. Mm -hmm. And I explained the exact same thing is when you have an approach that focuses on the preparation, you avoid all the conflict because here's where nails generally go wrong. Right. A lot of times people will go to start doing the dog's nails. Right immediately the first thing that they go to do is, is their mind is going to like, this is, this is going to be a shit show. Mm-hmm. Right. So they wrangle up the dog. They're wrestling the yeah. dog simultaneously <laughs> trying to grab the clippers or the Dremel and, and grind the nails. Yeah. And immediately right off the rip, the very first thing that you do is you create a ton of conflict and make a big fight. Mm. Right. Yep. And the dog's already in a state of fight. Right, because mm-hmm. you created this fight. They're trying to get away from you while the dog is trying to get away from you before you ever get them under control. You're trying to grind the nails and it just, nothing goes well with it. You never end on any success. You barely ever be able to get the nails actually done and it's just a disaster. Right? Yeah. So with this dog in particular, by simply before she worried about actually grinding the nails, having a couple introductory things we did to make sure we had the dog under control. The dog wasn't trying to flee us. We had the dog comfortable with us. We introduced the tool. Then we started grinding the nails. Mm-hmm. What wound up happening is all of that anticipation of fight went away and he was able to relax into the nail trim. We were able to get everything done and end on a really positive note where next time is going to be 10 times easier for him. Yeah. Right. So the step-by-step approaches are really important. And every time I do a dog's nails, I go through the same step-by-step approach, right? Yeah. The only difference is the more you do it, the less time you have to take on each step. Like all the, like maybe the four introductory steps leading into actually grinding the dog's nails. Maybe I can get through them in like 10 seconds because the dog is already in such a stable state of mind, but I'm still mentally checking those boxes when I go to do it. 